The Promise of an Anarchist Sociological Imagination by Erwin F. Raphael Quote from C. Wright Mills You see, I've set my stuff always against various forms of liberalism because those are dominant. But I could just as well, in fact easier for me, to be set against Marxism. What these jokers, all of them, don't realise is that way down deep and systematically, I'm a goddamned anarchist. Introduction July 23rd, 2018 Batisan Complex, Kazan City, Philippines. The spectacle of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo staging a political coup d'etat to gain the speakership of the Philippine House of Representatives, effectively grabbing the spotlight away from Rodrigo Duterte in his own State of the Nation address, was just another belated confirmation of what many people have been suspecting for a long time. The Philippine liberal democratic state is dead. The EDSA Republic, that mishmash of the elite rule, foreign interventionism and neoliberal economic mismanagement coated with democratic rhetoric has been discredited, pushed over the cliff, and now the vultures are feeding on its carcass. Is there a point in reviving it? Even the Christian Messiah promised his miracles of healing and resurrection only to those worth saving. Outside the Batisan complex, several groups converged, shouting Aust Duterte to their heart's content. The motley crew of liberals, national democrats, social democrats, self-styled socialists of different shades, a non-insignificant number of political opportunists, were united, not just by their opposition to the Duterte administration, but also in their belief that the state is necessary in bringing about the change that they seek. Whether the call is for a regime change or a bolder systemic revolution, the state is an essential element of visions of a post-Duterte future. Faith remains that a political institution that has historically been the bastion of hierarchic domination and violence could be turned into an instrument to fight against authoritarianism and elite rule. Truly, as Shantz and Williams put it, the accumulated experiences, histories and mythologies of centuries of nation-state hegemony make it difficult to even imagine anything that suggests alternative means of arranging society. The inability or refusal to see the state as the institutional disaster that it is, is not just a Philippine affliction, but a global one. The turn of the 20th century saw the state gutted and consigned to the sidelines with a diffusion of neoliberal ideas in seats of political power. However, the second decade of the 21st century has seen farcical callbacks to the strong states of yesteryears, with heads of state threatening trade warfare, imposing immigrant controls, and fanning the flames of nationalist populist jingoism with the likes of Donald Trump, Rodrigo Duterte, Bashar al-Assad, Jair Bolsonaro and Xi Jinping serving as poster boys of the new global political order. One wonders how long the facade masking this pile of rubble would manage to remain in place. The lack of imagination in the political sphere is matched only by the lack of imagination in the economic sphere. Since the end of the Cold War and the delegitimization of authoritarian socialism, Capitalism has reigned supreme globally despite mounting evidence of its historical complicity in exacerbating inequality and poverty. Neoliberal freedom has turned out to be nothing but individualised conformity, dressed in a discourse of choice. Capitalism has proven to be durable and adaptable, surviving one crisis after another. The Invisible Committee appears to have gotten it right in saying that we're not experiencing a crisis of capitalism, but rather a triumph of crisis capitalism. Many critics of the global capitalist order fall back to the old formula, trying to gain wisdom from the smoke still emanating from the extinct volcanoes of Marxism, digging up German, Russian, Italian and Chinese corpses to pick their brains, in search for theoretical guidance to revolutionary practice. Karl Marx once said, Tradition from all the dead generations weighs like a nightmare on the brain of the living, and it is such an irony that many self-declared present-day revolutionaries against capitalism could do no better than to summon up the spirits of the past, borrowing from their names, marching orders, uniforms, in order to enact new scenes in world history, but in this time-honoured guise and with its borrowed language. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Successes can be found in the cracks of the global system of control and domination. Chiapas and Charan in Mexico, El Alto in Bolivia, and Rojava in Syria, to name a few. What these communities have in common is not just a sensibility to relate their personal and community troubles to the global system of control trying to take hold of their lives. These communities also exercise the creative imagination to turn the slogan, another world is possible, into reality. 
relentlessly refusing to bow down to the common sense of how people's lives should be organised, and boldly asserting their right to self-determination. How are we to make sense of this mess? C. Wright Mill's opening statement in the sociological imagination still resonates today. People still feel that their lives are a series of traps, and that within their everyday worlds they cannot overcome their troubles. Reason and freedom, the cherished enlightenment values animating the best of the social sciences, remain imperiled with the creeping extension of societies of control all over the world. However, Mill's diagnosis that what people need is a quality of mind that will help them to use information and to develop reason in order to achieve lucid summations of what's going on in the world and of what may be happening within themselves, is proving to be insufficient in our over-explained era. We live enveloped in a fog of commentaries and commentaries on commentaries, of critiques and critiques of critiques of critiques, of revelations that don't trigger anything other than revelations about the revelations. What people need now is a quality of mind that will not just help them explain the condition of this world and their place in it, but also help them imagine how another world, another way of relating to each other, and another way of organising society could be possible. What people need is a quality of mind, enlivened by a practical utopian sensibility that does not lose itself in the clouds, but rather sees potentialities for freedom in the present, especially in the everyday practices of resistance against different forms of domination. What people need now is a quality of mind that lends not only a critical eye for intellectual clarity, but also a reconstructive vision of a society founded on the aspiration for a free society of free individuals. This, I would argue, is the promise of an anarchist sociological imagination.